All right, I wanted to do a plant profile on one of my favorite plants in the yard, which is Vigna luteola. Hoary pod cowpea is the common name that you see most of the time. Um, it's a legume. And it's obviously very closely related to the Vigna that is the, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but it's the you know, black-eyed peas, the ones that people grow, very popular permaculture and stuff like that in terms of used as a cover crop and nitrogen fixing and all those kind of nice buzzwords that people use all the time. But one of the big differences is this plant is native. This plant is indigenous to a lot of the southeastern United States, I know for sure. Um, and even into the subtropics. There's a pull off a flower here has the, let me get it to focus here, the classic, you know, bean legume flower, ant hanging out there. The plant is a, it just unbelievably aggressive and prolific. I mean, this plant grows and 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 grows. And grows. So, it is also an extremely uh, potent nitrogen fixer. The plant fixes, it's very similar in its nitrogen fixing capacity as a, you know, the cow peas that we use for, you know, black eyed peas, right? But the plant is, again, it's indigenous. This isn't a variety that's native to Africa like the cow peas that we traditionally grow. But Again, this one's indigenous here, Central Florida. And it's one of my favorite plants for establishing an area, you know, and, and just adding interest and adding biomass. Like this plant makes an amount of biomass that's just kind of unparalleled by any other plant that I know of that's, you know, definitely in that early succession category. You find it a lot growing in disturbed areas, disturbed roadsides. It's abundant in like coastal fringe habitats. You'll find it a lot. But even in old spoil piles and roadside ditches and stuff like that, you'll find it, it can tolerate just massive variety of different areas. You can see the immature seed pods here growing and it'll wind its way up this beauty berry and off into the netherworld, wherever it's gonna go. It just, they just go everywhere. Everywhere you, everywhere you go back here, they're just, I think I planted one like two years ago, like over there somewhere. And I think it's the same plant, I don't even know. But they just go and go and go and go. And they have these beautiful bright yellow flowers and just make a lot of seed, which I wanted to show to you. Here I got a, found a seed pod that was dry. That's what the seed pods look like when they're mature. I don't think the beans are edible. They have like an alkaloid in them that's toxic, as do most leg, many legumes. But I don't know that for sure. I wanna do some more research on that. But if you're a permaculture person, you know, this plant is not only a really potent nitrogen fixer, it doesn't have the edibility factor, but it will make, crush this. Like most legumes, when the seed pot dries up, it twists out like that and just splays the seeds all over the place. There's the seed. The seeds, um, again, it'll grow abundantly from self-seed. It's, it's really thought of as a noxious weed borderline here in Florida. But like many awesome native plants, it's only considered that because it just grows so easily. You can see what I do with it. I just chunk it out there and don't care. And look, see all these runners coming out? <laughs> Trying to grow out into the yard here, into the outside to escape their pen that I've made for them. They make these real tough stems. You can actually, I'm sure you use them for like cordage or something like that if you needed to. They'd probably do really good for that. But, you know, again, they're a native legume, so I see so many permaculture plants that people put out there that are not native and 
You know, as somebody who's passionate about native plants, I don't like seeing the native versions of things just passed over because it's not always the point to harvest things for food, right? Could be the nitrogen fixing capacity. And I'll show you something here. Like these native cowpeas, they just go and go and go and go and go. And I don't have to do anything, okay? Let's walk over here. And I'll show you the miraculous iron and clay cowpeas that are just getting absolutely dismantled 24 hours a day by the black bean aphids. This is my other project area here. Here's your iron and clay traditional cow peas, black eyed peas. And look at this. Oops, I pulled the whole plant out. Black bean aphids. Or actually, I take that back. I think they're cow pea aphids. I think that's actually its own type of aphid. Look at this. This is, this is all that happens to my cow peas here. And I'm not saying that they won't grow. They'll, they'll beat these aphids. They'll, they'll probably take go past them. But this doesn't happen to the <laughs> to the to the native ones. And if I'm growing them as a cover crop, you can see there's your your nitrogen fixing nodules there. If I'm growing them as a cover crop, I want things that grow without my intervention. I don't just because it's trendy to use these cow peas doesn't mean that. You know, and then people say, oh, well, they're perennial. Well, we don't want that. You know, we don't want something that's going to become a weed. Well, why not? Chop and drop that stuff. Throw it down on the ground. Cut it back. A weed is only in your imagination. So, you know, use the cowpeas. Yeah, I know. I'm showing you the side of my house, which is a little bit embarrassing. But that's all right. We keep it real here. I wanted to walk out the front here. I'm sure I have more cow peas running around somewhere out here. Through the forest we go. A lot of butterflies out here. Oh gosh, overexposed. Yeah, see? Here's some more crawling up this cassia over here. They were all over in my wild lines up here. Crawling all over everything, going ham. But you know, I don't worry about them. Oh, I thought there was a bee on me. Just let them go. Just let them go. Stop fighting it. They're such a good plant. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, forget about it, compost. Oh, you like those seed pods? Forget about it, compost. I love it. So, the moral of the story is don't hate on the native cow peas. And if you want seeds, just go collect them. That's all you gotta do. Walk to the edge of a mangrove swamp and I guarantee you're gonna find them. At least here in Florida. You see those bright yellow flowers on the edge of the road? Pull over, grab you some seed pods, throw them out there. You'll never have to plant them again. If you're trying to establish a food forest, you're trying to establish an area from a crappy lawn. It's one of the best plants to do that. You gotta harvest the early successional plants that nature offers up. Too often we, oh, we gotta plant the cow peas because they give us food. Well, yeah, how many times are you gonna go harvest all those beans? You know, if we're growing a cover crop, I want something that grows without my intervention. Now those aphids will get on these cowpeas, but they just go, huh, and they just keep going. And they just blow past those cowpea aphids. They just don't even, they don't even, they go, the, the cowpea aphids immediately go for those little, the tender cultivated varieties. So, Again, if you're a native plant person, I couldn't recommend this plant more. You know, be untamed with your landscape. Let it go. Let nature do what nature does. 
and rampancy is a big thing that people don't let happen and they wonder why they don't get any wildlife in their yard. Here's some more seeds. Look, you want some seeds? Right there. I think I'm gonna sell them on Etsy. $5.99. Oh, oh God. But yeah, that's a, again, Vigna luteola, quarry pod calci. Highly recommend it. So don't be afraid. Just because you read about that it's a weed. Oh God, look at my camera's all messed up. Don't be afraid. Let them go. You got to let them go. But, oh look, I found some back here too. Who knows where this plant's coming from? <laughs> Look at it. Just winding up this elderberry. Just totally hanging out. I'm gonna let it go. It's gonna carpet this whole elderberry. I don't care. Let it go. Let it do what it's gonna do. Let it drop a million seeds on the ground. Forget about it. As long as your HOA doesn't care. <laughs> Peace out.